Hello and welcome to Ojai Valley Family Shelter Shower Bus. We're about to give you a demo within a few minutes here that can just show you how to operate this for the good and purposes of those who are underserved. Thank you for being here. Okay, so when you arrive, put on the parking brake and you leave it in park. At that point, you can move over here to the control panel and this control panel operates your doors. So we're gonna open the doors, door open, Flip that lever right up there to the right, the red one, all the way over, all the way over. There you go, ready? Go, open the doors, and deploy or stow the ADA ramp. We're going to deploy it. you're ready to allow people in but first you're going to check out a few things the first thing I want you to do is understand that when you're traveling everything has to be latched so it doesn't move so you're going to remove this rubber latch here and your ADA shower door will swing open at this point you can step in here everything is pretty much ready to go except for you do have this block which stops the shower doors from sliding upon transport take that off set it aside Utilize the service door. It's a double cylinder deadbolt on each side. And if you notice, that way you can lock it out so the two people do not cohabitate the same location. So we move into what is the standard shower area. Standard shower area still has the same type of system. However, in this particular case, the block is here. And if you notice, once I remove the block, the doors want to roll. So you can go ahead, take this out, set it aside, or put it somewhere like here, which is a storage area for you. To open the rear door, we'll have to go to the outside, so let's go do that. So as you arrive at the door, this is a handhold which helps you get out, but it has to be removed from the door. To stow it, you can stow it this way, or you can stow it this way. I like to have it closing the door so that the door can't accidentally pop open. As you open the door, you'll notice there's a step section here, but if you come back around here, you want to make sure this door is fully deployed. And the way to guarantee that is to put the clasp in place. Now you come back over to your steps, you twist the handle, it pulls both of these triggers away, it'll pull this for you. And it sets in place. Now you have access to this location. With the vehicle off and the keys in your hand, you walk to the next two locations. The first thing you want to do is unlock the gas, open the door, swing it open. Make sure that this lever is pointed in the direction of the gas line. That's one safety. The second, open up the gas all the way. You can let this reclose. You don't need the lock at this point, but just latch it so it doesn't swing and hit someone. Your next thing is you're going to need water and power. So we have this panel here. It's from on your key ring. You'll have this key. You open this up. And you'll find that you have two things here, your water and your power reel. I'm going to ask uh, George Magana to come on over here. George is going to pull this hose out and completely deploy it in one direction. All right. Take all 50 feet. One. So, so you have to pull it until you hear the clicking, and it's and then you can let it back. George is going to do the same thing with our electrical. You hear the ratcheting sound. The ratcheting sound is because this is a spring-loaded coil. When we want it to stop, what we have to do is we get to the close to the end the clicks and while it's clicking take a look here while it's clicking that's when you let it go you let it go backwards and that will allow it to lock okay so now George is going to take the power and plug it in and I'm going to take the hose and connect it to our water source all right so once you are ensured that you have water flow and water pressure into your hose 
You then also make sure that you have power and electricity to your power cord. From here, we move to the InstaHot system. Now, I have shown you that we keep this closed just to lock it, keep it out of the way. Now, that that is unlocked, we come here and we hit the on button. And you'll notice it comes up to number 104. 104 degrees is a standard setting for heat, for water, 104, 105, nothing hotter, nothing colder. No one will get scalded. This is the perfect setting we've been utilizing for the last three years for our homeless shower units. So the upper, up and obviously up and down is... If you need to increase the heat, you push the upper button. Now we're at 105. If you need to decrease it, it's the lower button. It's very simple. If it's showing a lot of different colors because it's confused, you can hit the reset and you can hit the plus or minus and it'll reset pretty much automatically. And again, up at the top, what do you have to have? Doug? At the top, you make sure your gas is fully open. Okay. And you make sure that this valve, which is stowed in this position, is normally there. So it's pointing to the supply. Got it. Supply is connected. The gas is open all the way. And then just reset your door so there's no head Okay, now that we have water pressure and heat to the unit, we need to be able to expel the water that's used after the shower. So we have hoses, which are deployed from here, which I'll pull out in a moment. But first, on your keychain, we'll have some type of small screwdriver to turn this just an ever so slight quarter turn, and your door opens for connection. This is the rear shower. This is the forward shower. Okay, so here's our drain line, which you'll connect to the location that you need connected. Secondly, since you have two systems here, you're going to need a Y to connect both gray water sections. So we'll connect this to the front. Could you show by that, twisting? Uh, show that again. Could you do that? On... How about we show it on the back? Okay, perfect. Sure. Okay, so as you can see, it's connected to the front. To make that connection is relatively simple. This has ears and locking pins. This has pins, so you slide it over and you turn it until the pins line up with the edge. That now locks it. The same thing is done on the extension where you'll turn and lock it. And the same thing on your further extension where you can turn and lock it. And then for your gray water, you can connect to your gray water section. Making sure the head is down. Okay, now okay. that you have connected your gray water, you can enter your shower, making sure everything is open. Secure your doors to stop walkthrough. Remove the key to keep privacy. Now your shower is operational. There's a couple things to know about the ADA. Once you pull your shower doors open, you'll see it has a seat inside the shower. This seat is removable by moving it up out of the way. So if someone has difficulty getting in, they can come in and put it down, or they can put it down, sit on it, slide over, put their feet inside. So for this operation, we're gonna leave it down I'm going to pull the doors back over. And you have your standard wand, ADA wand. As you turn this power on, it's only one temperature for water. This is movable up and down by just pushing this pin. Or the wand is removable, but you test your water at this point to make sure it's warm. It's now warming. And again, there's only one temperature. There's Which one temperature. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Let's go to the back. Can we go this way? No, because we're at the service door. All right. Okay, <laughs> for those who are temporarily abled, this is the access for the standard shower. Once you unlatch the door at the back, the person can enter. And they'll be able to close the door behind them. 
The stairs do not obstruct with the door, so it, it's a non-issue and we'll leave it open for light at this moment. Okay, also this shower is set up the same way. We already moved the block. This is your standard shower. There is not a wand, so it is just set up for standard operation, the same situation. It turns one way, fully on or fully off. You'll notice to the back of the shower, there's some shelving here where there could be rolled towels or whatever types of things you want to put in there. Also, in the corner down below, we will have mounts for another, an additional propane tank, so you have additional propane as you go. If for some reason you need to stow a lot of things, this is an excellent place where people aren't even going to look. I would say extra hose, extra cording, things that you want, chalk blocks, etc., for your rig. Okay. Okay, so when you're going to travel, it's very important you do these steps. First of all, make sure your door is closed all the way, or should I say, all the way forward. Secondly, you'll notice your block here has two types of slots. The front ones are to hold the glass, the back ones are to hold the metal. Underneath, there's a slot that rides on this unit. So I like to put the glass in first, slide it down the metal edges, these doors are locked, they're moving nowhere. This is a good time to use your service door because you've now closed the rear door. And we're gonna do the same thing on your ADA, on your regular standard shower. Gonna remove the block, aluminum side out. Make sure the doors are stepped all the way forward. Put the block in first against the glass and then second against the aluminum and push down and it will firmly set with the aluminum side out. This is locked for travel. Come back through, do the same thing with your security door. Make sure your security door is locked out also. And finally, even though this door locks from the inside, when you're traveling, your ADA privacy door needs to be latched so it does not swing while you're moving. Now that you've disconnected your power cord, it's time for it to be deployed back into the unit. The best way to do this is pull it out straight from the unit and then we'll deploy it back in. I'll show you. As you return the cord in, pull it till you hear it start to retract. Run your cord on one side of the coil and then kind of move it back across to the other side so that the cord kind of splays out over the whole reel and doesn't lump up in one area. How many, how many feet do you have there? We have 50 feet of cord and we don't want it all in one spot. So if you allow it to move back and forth across the reel, the rear will fully retract and store the cord. All right, now I'm gonna disconnect the hose and do the same thing. Once again, your hose is deployed straight away from the vehicle and allows you to return it back to the reel. Moving it back and, back and forth across the reel. Until it's fully retracted. Close the door. And lock it. Your final step is to make sure that your liquid petroleum is shut down. So you're going to need to reopen the cabinet one last time. You can reach up here, shut the valve off, and as a double safety, you can take this lever here and turn it 180 degrees the opposite direction, and that will shut it off as well. Now we're going to close it here, latch the handle, and now take the key. and lock out the door so that there is no theft issues.